welcome to this video lecture of paper industry production in a factory a paper mill handicraft production is done at home by the small families with the help of some simple tools in contrast to this we are now going to see how the production is done on a large scale with the help of machines and a large number of workers so now we'll discuss about the paper industry how is the paper industry production done in our state in andhra pradesh how many paper mills do we have in our state we have four paper mills in our state one is at sirpur kagaznagar in adilabad district second one is at rajamandri east godavari district karnool and the third last one we have is at badrachalam what are the raw materials that are required for this industry before we get into the details of raw materials we need to understand what is a raw material raw material is a material that is required to produce a commodity that is called as raw material the products what we need to produce something is called as raw material what are the raw materials that are required for paper mill industry or for making papers generally we need bamboo eucalyptus or subabul trees wood for making paper factories require large and continuous supply of this raw materials you can see in the picture the lorry is carrying the raw material in your textbook besides wood there are large number of chemicals such as common salt caustic soda and so on are used in making the paper at different stages scrap paper is also used and recycled in paper mills so what are the raw materials that are required for paper industry the raw materials that are required are the wood from bamboo or eucalyptus or subabul trees wood common salt caustic soda and some other chemicals factories also use heavy machinery to run by electricity paper mills need electricity for operating its machines so they also need large amount of electricity and also large quantity of clean water to maintain or to wash the requirements when it comes to electricity they need at least 25 megawatts of electricity every year and they use it for the entire purpose they also use large quantity of clean water so basically for the paper industry the raw materials are wood from the bamboo subabul or from eucalyptus they also use common salt or caustic soda electricity and water these five are the major requirements for paper industry paper mills and the disappearance of bamboos present day we can see that forests are disappearing we call it as deforestation or deforestation why the forests are cleared due to the growth of population we need to construct more houses we need more land due to this they are clearing the forest and using it for various other purposes this is one of the reason why deforestation is happening so for papers if they need bamboo or subabul wood they need to grow in the factories or industries are located nearby to the factories but in the present day scenario it is becoming very difficult to find forests and also to establish paper mills near the forest because if forests are not there there is no point in establishing a paper mill there anyway 
when we have already established the paper mills now we need to keep them going so from few decades they have employed contractor or tribal people to get the bamboo wood from the forest or from the far off places to the paper mill and they also use the tribal people services for cutting it into pieces for cutting the trees into wood hence paper mills are looking for alternative raw materials like subabal which are grown in villages this led to the encouragement of people to grow subabal trees on farm land by the government nowadays the paper mills bring wood from far off places what is the process of paper making the paper making process consists of five stages chipping making of wood pulp spread of the pulp pressing drying and rolling and the last stage is cutting let us see the each stage in detail process of chipping how does the process of chipping happen this is the first stage where the large wood pieces are cut into small small chips with the help of large machines they are about 15 to 20 workers in this section the chips are separated according to the size the big chips are again cut into small small chips so basically they want to make it as small small parts the large wood is cut into small small parts and the chips are segregated by 15 to 20 workers once they find large chips again they were taken back and they were sent for cutting into the machine so they were again made into small small chips so how do they do all these things once the load of the lorry comes in that will be taken into the machine where it is chipped so it takes 30 minutes to cut one lorry of wood the work goes on throughout the day in the process of cutting and chipping this is the first stage moving to the next stage the second stage is making of wood pulp the chopped wood or the chipped wood the wood which is cut into small small chips are sent to fiber line section in this section the chips are boiled with some chemicals in large vessels why they need to be boiled because once it is boiled they become soft in nature and they turn into thin fibers or cotton threads like structures so the liquid pulp is then whitened using the chemicals then it becomes creamy white we would then take the liquid pulp in milky white color without any dust so this is very crucial stage in the second stage the chopped wood is sent into the fiber line where it is boiled with some chemicals in the large vessels and throughout the wood chips are turned in the process in this process they turn into cotton fibers and the liquid pulp is then whitened using the chemicals then it becomes a creamy white color one without any kind of dust in the wood so no dust remains there third stage is spreading the pulp the liquid pulp is then spread on the thin screens over a cylinder where the important stage because it is the place where they decide width length and thickness of the paper so the water is drained out or it's evaporated due to the heat and the pulp dries up once this is done the pulp is then forwarded to the conveyor belt now we move on to the pressing drying and rolling stage the drying pulp is then pressed by the rollers to smoothen it once the pulp dries up completely we get a sheet of paper which is now rolled up and we move to the final stage that is cutting we then send it to the godowns for supply so it is made into rolls and sheets based on the sizes what we require 
So these are the five stages what we have. First one is chipping. The large wood is chipped into pieces. Then it is sent to the fiber line where it is boiled with chemicals in a large vessel and then it turns into cotton fiber. It is washed with chemicals and it becomes creamy white without any dust. Afterwards, it is spread on thin screens to evaporate the water and once the water dries up, it is then sent to the conveyor belt where it is pressed, dried and rolled where the pulp gets a complete sheet of paper and once the rolling is done, basing on the requirements, the machines will cut them into rolls and sheets and it's packed and sent to the go-downs. How about the working hours in the industry? Basically, there are three major shifts in the work. Shift A, Shift B, Shift C. In Shift A, they have timings from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Shift B, they work from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. C shift, this is also called night shift, that they work from night 10 p.m. to morning 6 a.m. So in the night shift, whoever is working, the workers will get a special allowance or extra pay for them. There is also a shift called general shift, which is only for the administrative staff. Mostly, they work from 9 to 5 p.m. What about the shift workers and how do they do these things? Where is our paper sold? Our paper is sold in the countries like Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Nepal, Malaysia, Singapore, Nigeria and South Africa. This is possible because the railway network and the roadways have developed a lot and it has made the transport of wood and paper to and from the mill very easy. So we are able to export it to the other countries in Asia and also in African regions. Working in the paper mill, we can broadly classify the working staff into five categories. They are the engineering staff, the permanent staff, the non-regular staff, the casual worker staff and the administrative staff. First, we will discuss about the permanent staff. Permanent staff has a lot of advantages for them. First thing is they are provided provident fund. Once they retire, they get lot of money for them as a money for their future saving. They also are covered under medical insurance. In case if the reason employee is terminated due to some accident or anything, he will be paid compensation amount from the factory. He will also receive salary every year with rice and the salary will be increased for every six months to one year basing on the government policy. In case he or his family members fall sick, they can go to the nearest government hospital or employee state insurance hospital known as ESI where they can get the medicines free of cost. For this, they deduct some amount of their salary and maintain it. They also get regular holidays and one day every week, that is Sunday is a holiday for them. Festivals and some additional leaves are given for them. They also get some kind of allowance or bonus for buying during the festive season. Non-regular employees. Workers like Umar are paid very less salary when compared to the permanent workers just 8000 rupees per month they do not get any kind of allowances medical help or provident fund or any other benefits like how anand gets as a permanent employee they don't have any paid holidays casual workers a lady called pushpa comes every morning to the factory and sees if there is any work usually they are applied for five days to clean the floors in the factory so they also don't get any kind of benefits what the permanent employees get. Now, what about the pollution that is being caused? Some factories are owned by the individuals, some are owned by the government. So 
the government runs the factories for the welfare of the people now what is the advantage of this they get lot of employment opportunities they reduce a end to the unemployment situation but are the industries useful to a large extent there are certain negative implications also like pollution many factories need raw materials in large quantities so the natural resources like forest rivers mines are rapidly getting exhausted yes of course they use lot of material we also discussed they need lot of clean water forests are disappearing because they cut regularly and they also release lot of amount of smoke the last year the paper mill got a fluent treatment plant to which all waste water on the chemicals is sent because we discussed in the making of the process of the paper that the water is used with chemicals heated up because the pulp has to be cleaned the caustic soda and common salt is used so these all become chemicals and they are getting added to the land or rivers it will cause great damage to the ecosystem that's why we need an effluent treatment plant which will clean the waste water and that makes the machine remove all the contaminants which are dangerous for the human beings to survive there or the animals to consume water there are also large number of factories in our state where they produce different kinds of articles and still they are not having the effluent treatment plants or which can safeguard the environment so basically factory industries or the paper mill industries produce lot of environmental damaging smoke and also use the resources to a large extent keywords in this chapter are machines raw materials energy and water production workers managers market and owner that's all we have in this chapter please subscribe and stay tuned we we'll catch you in the next video lecture thank you